Hey everyone, my name is Monroe Mann with Break Diving. Today we're having a special educational event on homeschooling and joined today with uh, by Alice in Canada, Ferds in the Philippines and Ashley in Singapore. I'm in the United States and we all have different perspectives on homeschooling and uh, we're going to hear a little bit about uh, everyone's situation. So I'll, Ashley, tell us, everyone just give a brief introduction with 30 seconds or less of why you have some interest in homeschooling. Ashley, go ahead. Um, I was homeschooled after first grade because my older brother convinced my parents that public school wasn't great for us. So from then on, my mom took it upon herself to be our teacher. And after a while, it just kind of evolved into, evolved into self-studying. So that's where I am now. Awesome. Alice? Mm. Uh, that time, yeah, when my son, uh, 10 years old, he got a uh, nerve and skin and he got a broken her, his uh, leg. And then uh, he really was sad because the school start. He said, mom, I don't want to uh, waste one year to waiting. And then said, no problem. You don't need the hall. Can you teach me? I said, of course, and uh, even you can study, I teach you how to study by yourself. And after the five, uh, six months, he go to back school, school test. He got a really high mark. You know what? That time uh, he said uh, in his life, uh, study life is the best time because uh, he can learn two hours a day. And the other time that's kind of watching movie, play game, really happy. And that have got, can get a really high mark. Means uh, even 10 years old kids can study by her himself. That's why I say this way really good for Excellent. kids, some kids, you know. Awesome. Great intro. Ferds? So back in 20, 2017, I and my wife decided to homeschool my kids because we believe that. Uh, the traditional school really don't offer much in terms of quality. There's a there's a huge gap in the quality delivery and delivery. And besides, here in the Philippines, you waste so much time traveling because of the traffic, and it's more expensive. It's more expensive to study in private schools. So, homeschool is it. Yeah. And we've been here for three years now. Three years. Nice. Wow. Three so years. Three years. Yeah. And my interest in homeschooling, I don't have kids yet, but I've been through the educational system. And I look back and I, I appreciate the time and effort my teachers put in. But as I've grown older, I realize how much more I've learned by just reading books and sitting at home, reading books and watching YouTube videos and tutorials. And if you're very disciplined, you can learn a heck of a lot more without having to be slowed down by the other students who maybe you're not at your level and or yeah, right. you're left behind because the, all the other students understand the material better and then you just, you're lost. And so I, I, I like homeschooling and I think if I have kids, I might really consider uh, doing homeschooling with them because I, also, I, again, here in the U.S., the, the school system is just becoming very political and very race. It's very focused on race and focus. Like, I don't want my kids oh. to even know what their race is. You just be a good person, treat other people as you want to be treated. And I don't think the teachers are doing a very good job preparing yeah. children to become ad adults. The other reason I want to be homeschooling, the, the, I didn't learn about finance in school. Even in college, mm. law school, I didn't learn about how to manage money, didn't learn how to invest in the stock market, didn't learn about how to invest in real estate, uh, didn't learn how to cook. Code. Didn't learn how to, <laughs> how to code. code. <laughs> didn't learn. I feel like all of the things that are really useful and imperative right. things for You're life. Right. I had a life skills course, eighth grade, and I learned how to sew and use a sewing machine. And I think that was great. But that I think was the only thing that I remember us doing. We didn't learn about managing money or anything. So anyway, that's my interest in this. So let, let's go around. Oh, before we go around again, I have another question for everybody. Just for those of you watching on YouTube, if you want to join us, you find these things interesting. If you want to participate in these events, 
please come join us at breakdiving.io. The link is in the description. Please also click like, subscribe, and, and share the video. So let's, I'm just going to guide this a little bit because the three of you have actual experience with it and may have more, but, and I'll give my two cents he, he, here and there. But Ferds, I know you, uh, you, you have some challenges with homeschooling. I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but do you want to share mm. anything or have any questions yeah. for Ashley and Alice because they've been going yes, through it? Yes, 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 yes. So the biggest challenge for someone who homeschools uh, uh, his or her kids is that um, there, there could be times when the parent, usually it's the parent who, who's the teacher, right? And the parent mm -hmm. becomes so, so busy that the parent might overlook the, uh, and, and might leave, leave the studying too much on the kids. But like uh, what Ashley and Alice have said, they just self-study, right? We are natural learners. We, we, we can. It's, it's part of human nature. We, we are curious. We can learn by ourselves. And we have the tools right now. But sometimes we need the guide, still need the guidance of the parent, of the teacher. So what happened to me this school year? Uh, I forgot. Um, sorry, I, I must have uh, overlooked really because I was so busy with many, many things going on. And I forgot to guide my two daughters. I, I have two daughters and one son who is for homeschool right now. So during the first two quarters, their grades suffered. <laughs> they even failed in their major exam. So right now I, I told myself from for the third and fourth quarter, I will really focus. I'll give them more time and attention right now so lesson for me is really a lot time every day to guide to guide the kids even though they can learn on their own but still we have to be there so uh, alice and ashley both of you have come from different perspectives <clears throat> alice you, you you were the homeschool teacher of us of a son who ultimately did very well on his exam and ashley you're the you're the actual homeschool student what 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 advice do you have? What advice do each of you have for Ferds to help him with his to make him a better homeschool teacher and maybe some tips that he can use with his to guide his children to be better homeschool students? Alice, do you want to go first? Yeah, you go first. Okay. Well, honestly, a lot of the my mom put in so much work into this and she was constantly thinking of new ideas and learning about how to teach us because she doesn't have a teacher background she, you know she had to learn along the way but we she came up with a lot of different systems like writing i don't know how old your daughters are but when we were smaller she would you know give us popsicle sticks with our subjects that we had to do and then every day we would have it and just draw them out and go completing them and then we would get a little sticker or something but then later on mm. she would buy us planners and write down what we had to do for the week so then we would just look at it and cross it off as we went along and if we needed her help we could call her but yeah we stuck with the planner for a really long time because she didn't have to be constantly sitting next to us so, yeah. Let me just ask a question to you, Ashley. What, were there times when you were stumped and you you didn't have the answer? And do you do did you go to your mother and say, "I don't understand how to do this"? Or are there times when your mother actually said, "Hey, let's sit down and for thirty minutes, let's do this lesson together, and I'll teach you"? How does that work? Um, a lot of times she would sit me through the first few parts so I knew what to do. And she'd be like, "Okay, I'll highlight things you need to do, and then you know." Make, she'll make sure I know how to do them just in general but a lot of questions I would get stuck and then I'd ask her for help and she would look and say I have no idea let's uh I'll check the answer and then I'll try and work you through it because I mean algebra too not a lot of people remember that in their parenting years I guess so in those situations when when even after she looked at the answer book she didn't know what to do and didn't know how to help you where did she turn to to help you master the material um Google. Google. Okay. We'd probably Google it or check Khan Academy because that's a pretty good online school system. And then we'd try and we'd just try and find the answer together. That was quite fun. 
And Alice, what about you? What, what, what do you think some of the keys for your success were as a homeschool teacher? Mm, um, I think the case is different. Maybe I'm lucky my son is uh, that kind of really uh, know how to under, uh, how to know study by himself. I just teach him, you do this way. First, read the book and then uh, remember what uh, they say and then you there and uh, behind they have some you know a uh, lot of question and let him find the answer and then back I, I will uh, actually that time I still working and then I back home and then he put uh, his question there and then I will answer that's why he is uh, feel more fast you know in at the school he'll study two hours maybe schooling they need uh, two days that's far different he that he studied first and more easy so, so you're saying you're saying he studied more efficiently by doing the study on his own yeah and the fast and mm -hmm. then really good so uh, i think if for this question is you know what? Um, better encourage the kids study by themselves and give them more. Uh, I, I think uh, of one of my friend, her daughter like this, the just letter he reading book, interesting book gave to him, reading a lot and then can know how to write, how to you know write, writing, and then. And many things that he she can find the, the answer, mm -hmm. the writing, the reading aloud, and then you know for the English, in in China he just reading too much, so much book, I even mm -hmm. didn't go to school to we call the tutoring right, tutoring don't no no never go there, mm -hmm. just get a really high mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a question. Different. I have a question. I have yeah. a question for, for Alice and Ashley. How, how much uh, materials or study aid materials did your, or did you use Ashley or did your son use uh, Alice? Did you have to buy a lot of materials to use or you just use the book, follow it, and that's it? So in my case, the downside to homeschooling is um, taxes don't pay for it. So you have to pay for all the materials. Um, but yeah, my mom did buy quite a lot of um, books. And she also, we did a mix of textbooks learning and e-learning. So she would do subscriptions for online things because, you know, kids are such visual learners. Just reading textbooks is very hard to learn. So yeah, she did. She did buy a lot of material. And Alice? Yeah, that time when I didn't buy a lot of things, only have one two textbook, and the most is just there, uh, like uh, school, school, uh, the school books, just reading, and then he got to understand and doing some textbook, make sure he can understand. She can focus. That time only uh, math and uh, we call Chinese, this two. So not that much. Mm -hmm. 10 years old, uh, only two. One, one is math, one is uh, two cars, one is uh, Chinese. So more easy. Well, if you both had to give advice, uh, let's say, let's say Ferds was, you, you, you both are the teachers, Alice and Ashley, and Ferds is your mm -hmm. student and he's in a course on how to be a good homeschool parent to ensure success what what would your advice be to parents and to or to any other anyone who's watching on youtube who's trying to be a good homeschool parent teacher okay i feel uh for the parents not all the parents can be a good teacher right you cannot have teaching everything but if you Teach how to your kids how to learn by themselves, more important. 
Yung tata, my son said, mm, Mom, you can teach me, right? I said, no, I feel you are so smart. You don't need teacher. You can study by yourself. The how I can study? I said, see the books you read, and then you see the question, and then you, you, you find out your answer. If you pan out, then I can help you. Actually, most time, most time is he did by himself. Case like this. You had the first, you first say you are good, you can do it. And they think, oh, I can do it. I will do, you know, like this. I always increase my case like this. Oh, you are best, you are good, you can do it. You are so smart, you can do it. And they can do it, you no? Know? And even, even you don't think, sometimes thinking they may not, but they can do because mm -hmm. they think. You trust him. You think he's good, okay? So sometimes, uh, I have you know what I have this uh, uh, similar things my in my life when I'm I'm in high school, I'm I'm health problem. I can now I just stay home to study by myself, mm -hmm. but I still good. So I think uh, if you know how to study by yourself. You are good, but uh, parents not. Uh, you see, we like uh, you. You can teach this, but you cannot teach all of the course, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to teach all the course, you are so tired. You have to learn a lot. But <laughs> you tell your kids, you can do this. Learn mm -hmm. by yourself. They can do it. Awesome. These are good. Yeah. These are very good tips. Excellent. Yeah. Ashley, what about you? Um, I would say maybe two. You have to. Three. I'm gonna. I'm gonna homeschool you right now, Ashley. You have to stop starting every answer to a question with um. So I'm gonna. Okay. I'm gonna ask you again, and you're gonna be my good pupil, and you're gonna think, pause, and then launch into your answer with the first awesome, powerful word. So, Ashley, what is your advice for your student first? Hello, words. Tailor it to your child and know what works for them and what doesn't, because each child learns differently and needs a different type of stimulus to make the information stick. This is so hard. Good. Uh, no, nope, didn't say that. <laughs> don't make them practice things they don't need to practice, because I know I've noticed in public school, they'll give you a list of what a hundred things of the same formula just to practice over and over and over. And it's mm -hmm. really, really boring. So yes. what my mom would do is maybe highlight every other question and it works mm -hmm. just fine. And the third one is teach them things that they won't learn normally in a public school, like emotional intelligence or life things, life skills, maybe finance because since they're, they have the opportunity to learn at home, you can teach them whatever they need to know. Actually, where were you homeschooled? In the US? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So, and uh, Alice, sorry, go ahead first. Where, did you, where did you homeschool your, your son, Alice, in uh, China? That time I said we are in China. Oh, in China. Okay. Yeah, you know China, in China. China. The kids have a lot of homework, right? And people, some people, parents said, oh, teacher, you can give more homework. My, my kids still have time to play. And now I'm right. different. I said, no, don't need that much. Two is enough. And then I back home, I teach, uh, tell my son, you know what I did? I tell teacher, don't give me too much. You too much homework, but you have to, Make yourself better. You have to get a high mark. If otherwise, the teacher will say, "See, you are wrong." I say, "Give two more work, uh, homework." You say, "No, no, your son is not good." So my son is okay, no problem, and uh, he got a hundred, uh, hundred percent for the math. That's why you have to communicate with kids, talking with your word. Make them thinking they are okay. They are self, give them a self confidence. That's important. Yeah, yeah. self confidence. Yeah. First, let me ask you what, why, why did you feel 
your kids didn't do as well this term? What, where did you feel you neglected them? And, and yeah, what, did you give them too much independence and not enough drill sergeant guidance? Like, like Ashley was saying, like every week there was a planner. Like how, I'm just curious, based on what you're hearing today, I'm curious to know what you feel may have gone wrong from your point of view as the teacher. Yes, so my my elder daughter, who's nine years old, has a new format. He, they, all of her lessons are now online. So it was an adjustment adjustment from her past two years. So maybe she uh, has difficulty adjusting to that kind of format. Uh, so the, the and, and of course the lessons were harder uh, today right now so and I wasn't really there to, to guide her so that, that's one thing and so she her her, her uh, lessons in math especially math that's where she mm -hmm. did poorly. I guess my question is like, why didn't you, and this is not a criticism, it's me just asking, because I, I haven't done this with, I don't have kids, I haven't homeschooled anyone. How, how, how did you only find out at the end of the term when, you, when the final grades came in that your daughter wasn't mastering the material? Do you do something every week where you give your daughter a quiz and she needs to have a closed book quiz and she shows you that she 100% understands it and then this way you know? I'm just trying to think like, uh, in order to avoid it happening, I feel like you, every week you need to make sure that she is on track. And if she doesn't finish all of the requirements for this gate, okay, you can't go out this next week because you've got to revise until you learn how to do this 100%, you, you have to focus more on it. I don't know, did you not do that or did you do that and there's still another problem? So during the first semester, uh, first quarter, all, all her quizzes are also online. So it was so easy, I guess, for her to, to score high in the quizzes because she could go, she could retake the quizzes. So I was thinking that based on the past two years, I pretty much left them although maybe more than 80 percent of the time they were by themselves studying mm -hmm. learning on their own so I, I thought this would also be the way that I that we could do the homeschooling now when it came to the mastery quarterly exam then the results were very poor so we tried to make adjustments but still uh, she she still couldn't really uh, do well in math so maybe i told her we really have i have to spend more time really with her what what just my, my experience just as a student i know that as i mentioned i think a lot of times teachers are terrible they're just horrible and they have tenure and they get paid lots of taxpayer money and the school taxes go up and the quality of education in the u.s just keeps dropping uh and i don't know what these teachers are getting paid for and people always think they're giving they're sacrificing so much and they're such great well i'd say 80 percent of the teachers in america are horrible and this is on youtube and people can quote me on that i i, I mean if, if someone sees this but i think it's true and I've been at the end of some really terrible teachers who didn't teach the material well. Uh, and or, as we said, we have different learning styles. Whatever that teacher's learning style was didn't resonate with me. And I just didn't get it. So I had to manually go out myself and find tutors, find external resources, find. So I don't think it needs to be of just you and your daughter. You have to, as Alice said, you don't know everything. And it may not be that you are a bad teacher or that the student is bad. It just may, you need someone else to explain it in a different way and you need other materials. And so if you're struggling and your daughter is not getting it, don't think, why am I an idiot? Why can I? All you need to do is your, your daughter needs to learn the material so that she can pass the class. So I think yeah. you need, what, what and I hate to think of the idea of teach to the test. Because that's, that's, I always think you don't actually learn material when you just learn what you need to do for the answers. But 
in the interest of ensuring your daughter doesn't stay back a year, you absolutely at the bare minimum need to make sure that she understands the bare minimum to pass whatever this, the Filipino tests are for passing. I, 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 if I had kids, I would absolutely, I, I don't like those quizzes where you can just take them over and over again and then eventually pass because eventually you just, you're just passing the quiz because you remember what the answers were uh, from the last time that you took it. I would give my daughter or son, hey, you're going to have to do my quiz too before you can go play with your friends. And sometimes it's just that discipline saying, look, you're not going out until you figure this out. I'm, I'll help you. And we'll get extra tutors. We'll go, we'll find a good Google, uh, a, a good website that'll help you provide more tutoring. But you need to learn this not only to pass the test, but to the level where I feel that you understand it. I don't think the student needs to get 100%. I, there's a great, great uh, expression, C's get degrees. And, and funny too, the people who get C's usually are the ones who start the multi-million dollar companies who hire the A students to work for them. <laughs> and, and that's a statistical truth. The A students usually don't go off and start companies because all of the companies are trying to recruit them even before they graduate. But the C students are having problems getting jobs. Nobody wants them. So what do they do? They use they start. their annuity and start their own company. So your daughter doesn't need to get straight A's to, to succeed. Yeah. In life. And That's I think right. the That's other right. thing too, maybe don't, don't, don't feel bad about yourself and don't let her feel bad if she doesn't get straight A's. I, I got C's and D's in law school, maybe one or two A's, but I'm still an excellent lawyer. And I passed the bar exam the first time. I know of many people who had straight A's didn't. So just getting good mm. grades alone does not mean that you are destined for success and getting lower grades doesn't mean you're destined for failure. Now that's my two cents on the on this situation. And uh, Ashley, did you want to add something? I see your mouth ready to ready to add something very insightful. I was going to cut in and say also putting so much pressure on grades and scores is also not great on the mental health of kids because then it just becomes about the grade. It, yeah. What they're learning doesn't matter as long as they have 100%. And then it also leads to things, unhealthy perfectionism and mm -hmm. other stuff. Yeah, and just that's what kind of what I was saying is you, you, you wanna make sure, at least for your situation, teach the test only to the point to make sure that she passes. Mm -hmm. But you as an educator need to also make sure she understands mm -hmm. the material yes. behind it. I mean, what, what good is it if she knows it, the material so well, but she can't pass the state exam? Yeah. And it's, it, uh, then she doesn't graduate high school or middle school or whatever, and then she doesn't, and she gets her education stunted, so. Uh, Ferds, did you have some, uh, I, we can just open up. I know Ferds has to leave in, in about 11 minutes. Is, is there any, Same. Alice, did you want to ask questions about to Ashley? I think you were the one that wanted this event in the first place, right? Yeah, I want to know, uh, I want to ask Ashley this, uh, the, how long you can study a day, take out the time, you know, I mean, so how, my, how long you, you study you know, one day, you know, a day well, for your course? Now, hmm, it's a little complicated. When it was mm -hmm. just my mom teaching, mm -hmm. I would maybe do, I don't know, three, four, five hours of schoolwork. It just depended on how long I took to do it. Yeah. But maybe three oh. hours as the bare, the bare minimum. But when I started doing a homeschool co-op with teachers and homework, mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe four or five hours a day. Oh, okay. But it's very flexible, so you can choose yeah. whenever you want to do it and the joy yeah, of homeschooling. Now, well, well, which grade you are in? Grade 12 or 11? I'm 16, but my birthday is in October. So yeah. I think I finished ninth grade or 10th. Retain, right? Or something. I, see, that's the only <laughs> problem with homeschooling. It's it's very it causes yeah. identity crisis. I think oh, you know. graduated I high that. school. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that problem my whole childhood. They would ask me, "What grade are you in?" I'm like, I yeah. don't know. 
So wait, how do you, mother, how does the, how is, does, uh, I, I think in the United States, I, I don't know, I think they have, we, you can, when you pass certain level tests, it shows you what your, what grade you've passed. Is it like that in Singapore where, you're, why don't you know? Um, well, I, I grew up in the U.S. It's just because I never placed importance on it because my mom would tailor it to my educational, my speed of learning. So I would usually be a couple of grades up mm. and then. Well, how, yeah, do, how so do, you, do you have to take a GED test in the U.S. in order to took, apply to um, college here? Um, also, another thing about homeschooling, I don't know a lot about the school system, uh -huh. but I know every year we would take the CAT, the California something test, test. Or something? yeah, Aptitude? something like that, Aptitude just to, test. yeah, just wait, to so see wait. where I was. You want you want to go to University of Washington, right, in Seattle? Yes. Yeah. Do they require that you have a GED or what do you need to show that you actually are, have been educated enough at the minimum level to attend college? Um, my, hmm, hmm. my mom is basically the one who puts down my credits for the things I've done because she's okay. the one teaching. So she has the whole spreadsheet of and the school things. will just accept that. I think so. You also have to take a placer test to get in. Okay, interesting. And yeah, yeah. I'm not too familiar with that, but mm. from what I've seen. What, what's the co-op teaching that you mentioned? I'm sure people watching on YouTube will want to know what that is. Oh yeah, the, yeah. there are several different co homeschool co-ops, at least in Washington, and they basically teach what would be hard for parents to, for example, biology, chemistry, history and of course they have math and stuff but the ones she had me go for was the science because we can't do dissections at home or experiments mm. and, so, and so, yeah. so wait, you're still you're, so you're not in high school in singapore you're doing the homeschooling still through the washington state system yeah i'm here in singapore on basically vacation this is my gap year know. so I yeah, understand. I've not done any schooling in Singapore. So you're doing nothing for the last year. Uh, well, I've been learning languages. That's good. But I say nothing. I say nothing official yeah. in terms of your home. Yeah, schooling. nothing official. No, can you go to college earlier than 18 or 19 because you, you're more advanced than, than perhaps I was when I was 16? Actually, my dad was saying... Early? My dad was saying I was supposed to go the year after next, but since I'm taking a gap year, so he just said, I'll just, just launch you straight in. So I'm starting next year when I am six, still year 16 17. or 17. Yeah. And, and you're going to physically go to Washington State? If there's no quarantine or COVID, yes, that's the plan. How fascinating. How cool that you get to start college. Uh, yeah. And that's my mom. She's visiting. I don't know if she's oh. dressed. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think. Hi, mother. We're almost out of Thanksgiving. Oh. Anyway. Oh. I'll, I'll, move, I'll move my oh, head. Happy over. Thanksgiving. Happy, happy Thanksgiving, Monroe. Yes, thank you. It's oh, tomorrow. Thanksgiving. But thank you very much. Yes, yeah, good. Well, it's oh, today for me. Baby. It's yeah, Thanksgiving oh. in Singapore. Yeah, and then no one celebrates it. <laughs> and there was something else that you had mentioned that that I wanted to ask about, but I wasn't sure. Oh, I think a big point too for homeschooling is also the social aspect, even though we have- Oh, that was my left. question. Yeah, I wanted to ask, did yeah. you feel, that's the only downside that I feel if my kids got homeschooled is that yes. they wouldn't make friends as easily. And I'm like, how did your parents help you to become more uh, connected with those your age? And, or do you feel that you didn't? That, Honestly, it's very complicated, but for the first part of my childhood up until, well, a long time, I had the only social contact I had was with my brother. We, mm -hmm. we fought a lot as children because we only were around each other. And I also did not have access to social media. So I was very behind on everything with pop culture and all that stuff. But then my mom created this group of fellow homeschoolers so the kids could get together and do meetups. So that was, yeah, fellow homeschoolers and we kind of became friends, but we're all very awkward because we don't know how to socialize. <laughs> so 
Yeah. I think getting the internet is having access to the internet and social media is an important aspect if you're homeschooled because that is another form mm. of socializing, learning how to get along with strangers because uh, yeah. I'm only now in these past couple years learning how to properly make friends and socialize, which is a little sad. It's not, it's not. I, it's, I, yeah. I, it took me until I was a real wall. I was very outgoing. People would say, oh, Manor is an outgoing person, but I didn't really feel like I knew how to interact with people. Like the Monroe that you see today, the mm -hmm. outgoing person who's very take charge and, hey, my name is Monroe. Nice to meet you. Didn't happen until mid twenties, late twenties. And so it, it took, it took time for me. I think it takes time for everyone and for everyone develops differently. And it, I was going to say better late than never, but you're 16. It's not really that late uh, <laughs> that, that, that you, you're getting there. Uh, yeah. Spurge, do your and, kids feel they are maladjusted socially or do you have, you, did you set up meetings with other kids their age, like uh, Ashley's mom did? Well, right now, because of COVID, we are pretty much cooped up here at home. But in the past, we had uh, regular get-togethers with their cousins. They have, they have a lot of cousins because I have nine, nine siblings. So every now and then, we get together and they, they socialize with their cousins. But apart from that, they're pretty much themselves. So there are four of them. So hopefully, they'll learn how to socialize by themselves. At least there are four. Ash, are you an only child? I am fortunate oh, you have a to brother. have a brother that I grew up with. So, okay. you know, I wasn't an only child and only child but you in my fought universe. with your brother all the time. So it wasn't like you had a great um, experience or you, or sometimes you got along. Uh, we basically so, fought all the time until a couple of years ago. Now we get along great. Okay. So I think it's just for homeschoolers. Everything comes a little later, Hi. <laughs> but it still does come eventually. What's, what's your name? What's your name? What's your name, Ash? My name is Joe. What, what was it? Kid. Yeah. Say, what's your name? My name is Joe. 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 Hmm. I'm I'm six years old. Wow. Wow. Good. Job. My, it's past my birthday. My birthday is in September 14th. Oh, <laughs> no, Good girl. Okay. Good girl? No, he, he's a boy. Oh, he's a boy. Boy? <laughs> boy? What? Yeah, with long hair. <laughs> yeah, I look like a girl. Even <laughs> <laughs> I'm studying. <laughs> Why are you studying? What are you studying? He's, he's studying beside me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway. Wow, we had a lot of nice. I I've learned a lot from uh, from all of you. So thank you very much. I I am glad that there's this event. So this worked out well. I think we could have this every we month. Get, this could get a lot of views on YouTube, maybe if the right people find it. I think a lot of parents could benefit from watching this. Maybe some school students will will gain some inspiration to help their parents. What's What's interesting that that I that I just recognized is I do homeschooling now and I've been doing it for the last 20 years because I mean look at my I got books over there I've got, I got my bookshelf over there I, I just have books constantly I'm reading constantly as, as Ferds know I, every week the whole break diving coding team does massive amounts of coding study and I kind of feel like those students who learn, as, as Alice said, teach your kids how to be independent and how to enjoy learning and, and realize that they don't have to depend on some class to broaden their horizons. They can learn. This can be a lifelong skill. If the parents do the yeah. good job, then wow, they don't stop after they finish high school or whatever. They just realized I want to learn something. Go to the bookstore, go to the library, go on to YouTube, yeah. go to Khan Academy. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that is you give to their, you no know, the, the good material more to help. You know, yeah. I just came to when I came to Canada, the first year I house four students at home. 
and uh, I teach them uh, Chinese. And uh, one boy told me, oh, teacher, you know, uh, before uh, my mom always sent me to a you know, different Chinese school. And they just let us write, read, read, and then we, I scared, I don't want to go there. I feel so, you no, know, just don't want to go there. And then I cannot remember even. It's a lot, but I cannot re remember. But here you just let us playing and then study a short time and we, I can, we learn a lot, a lot and uh, I can remember. Actually that time I used some, you know, like uh, TV and uh, online, some material to teach. So that's uh, you can uh, you can let the use uh, some another things like um, social media something like uh, uh, not only you you teach by yourself that yeah, yeah. hard and that's, tired. For I, I've always I, I've taught before I've taught middle school I've taught at college I taught online and you know the number one thing is if some if 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 and I've tutored before. If the, if the student doesn't get it the first time, explain it again using the exact same method. If the student doesn't get it the second time, you have to change the method. And yes. so just keep trying, like as, as Alice said, yeah, find, yeah. Okay, so maybe I need to Makes find sense. a video. Maybe it's better, yeah. let's go out of the house and go look at it. Let's go watch a movie about it. Let's go, let's go talk to somebody who who's, knows it even more than I do. Let's, per, let's use a visual aid. Let's try to use something with audio. Let's try to use different examples. Let's try to make it more fun. Whatever it may be, there's a way, where there's a will, there's a way, and there's a way to figure it out. And yeah. so, uh, so uh, for, I know you have to go. Do you have any other questions for Ashley and Alice? Since this is helping you prior most for of all. now, for now, I think uh, that's that's about it. All right. That's about it. Yeah, we can have a group picture, by the way. Monroe, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we're gonna do the group picture. I'm just gonna stop yeah. the recording real quick. So, for for okay. those of you watching on YouTube, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned a little bit more about homeschooling. I certainly did. We learned about the co-ops. We learned about different techniques that the homeschool teacher can use to help engage the students. Don't focus so much on grades. Make sure that they learn enough so that they can pass the tests, but then also make sure they have mastery. Teach them to love to learn. Lots of great tips and summaries here. So I thank Alice, Alice, and Ferds for joining me. And if you like this type of discussion, we have lots of videos on our YouTube channel here. And please come join our awesome social media community at breakdiving.io. Break diving, don't wait for opportunities to float to the surface. You should dive in and make your own breaks. So we will see you in the break diving community. Everyone wave goodbye. Bye.